Good evening, everybody. With a quorum of members present and the posted time having arrived, I'll call the Finance Committee meeting for Thursday or Tuesday, July 23rd, 2019. I'll call us to order. Um, the first item on our agenda tonight is the approval of the minutes of our previous meeting from 7-9 of 19. Uh, any revisions or corrections necessary for the minutes? If not, a motion to approve them would be appropriate. Motion by Kalbach. Is there a second? Second by Martins. Further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That motion carries. Item number two is discussion and possible action approving an airport ground lease. Um, the petitioner is Lewitsky, who wishes to build a hangar at the municipal airport. Um, the airport committee a week or two ago um, reviewed um, the proposal for Mr. Lewitsky and they recommended approval. It's using a standard ground lease without any modifications. Um, any questions about the contract? And he would pay property tax on the completed hangar. Um, motion to approve the contract. Motion by Kelbach. Is there a second? Second by Nutting. Further discussion? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That item carries. Item number three is discussion and possible action approving $7,825,000 of general obligation promissory notes, series 2019A. And Marianne, if you want to walk us through those, we've got um, all of the 2019 borrowing tonight, it looks like. Yep. So there's four issues that you'll be considering. The first one um, is the 2019A, $7,825,000. This finances our capital improvement plan, which is um, about $1.6 million related to that. And those are street projects. Um, then the evidence storage building of 298500 a tax increment districts number six of about $3,095,000, and TID eight of $2,687,000. Both TID six and TID eight. Uh, TID six is uh, Thomas Street and First Avenue, and TID eight is First Avenue. On my memo, I show the retirement of each. Um, one of these, so a promissory note, the maximum life is 10 years, but you can see that at least half of that is going to be paid off in six years to coincide with the life expectancy of TID-6. So it will have a very aggressive uh, repayment schedule. Um, and then, so that's, that's uh, the 2019A. Okay, and I see that with that also we've modified the funding um, in stages for the fire station to do some of that in our 2020 bond issue since the building is nowhere near complete um, and then also modified our capital spending a little bit or our funding mechanism for that so it looks like our borrowing is just slightly less than our adopted budget for 2019 correct. in that item correct so what would happen um, fire station borrowing has to be specified as such in the um, in the bond language and so if we so part of the budget for the fire station had a contingency and it also had <coughs> excuse me uh, furniture and when we looked at that we wouldn't need the furniture until 2020 and if we didn't need the contingency we would not be able to use it for something else so in a promissory note for example if one street comes under budget and another street comes over budget, we can take what we had thought we were going to use for street A and move it to street B. But that would not occur with the fire station. So okay. if we had leftover money, we wouldn't be able to, to spend it. it on other things. We would have to use that money to retire the debt. So rather than be in that predicament, we said let's take the contingency and the furniture out of the 2019 issue. Mm -hmm. Then by by 2020, we will know whether we need those contingency funds. If we don't, we will never borrow them. Right. And then for the furniture and fixtures, we will add that to the promissory note and pay that over 10 years versus 20 to save a little bit of interest cost. Okay. So that's the plan on the fire station. Sounds good. And then doing that in stages two allows yes. us to have a little more actual um, knowledge of our numbers yes, rather than to over borrow. Be more so. accurate. Yes. Excellent. <clears throat> All right. Um, so with that, on item, item number three, is there a motion to approve the borrowing um, for promissory note series 2019A? Motion by Nutting. Is there a second? 
second by Martins. Further discussion or questions? If I can just oh, go ahead. one thing that I meant to say is, you know, on these projects, because we're borrowing late in the season, most of these projects are already underway. So we're really, you know, if we don't borrow the money, we would have no financial resource to retire the debt. We would have to dip into our reserves dramatically to right. fund those. So really at this point obligated um, yeah. to borrow the money. Well, and it made sense. <clears throat> I mean, we waited a little bit too to see where we were at with interest rates and other communities hitting the bond market at the same time right. too, so we could hopefully hit the best possible time. So um, with that, um, seeing no further discussion, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That motion carries. Item number four is discussion and possible action on approving four million eight hundred and seventy thousand general obligation fire station bonds, series twenty nineteen B. Again, that's for the fire station. So on my spreadsheet, I show four million seven eighty eight. That's what we will use to pay the expenses of the fire station, but there's debt issuance costs. So, you know, you have to pay your attorney, you have to pay bond, um, bond our financial advisor, you mm -hmm. have to pay Moody's, you have to pay a variety of people. So the difference between my 4788 which will be used for the project itself, and the 4870 is those debt issuance costs. Okay. Um, so with that, is there a motion then to approve um, fire station bond series 2019B? Motion by Smith. Is there a second? Second by Nutting. Further discussion or questions? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That motion carries. Item five is discussion and possible action approving $6,530,000 sewer system revenue bonds, series 2019C. And uh, this is based on the capital plan adopted by the Utility Commission, and this funds um, underground work for sewer uh, replacement as well as um, replacement for things like um, uh, booster stations. Uh, and we do have Ellers, our financial advisor, uh, helping us with a long-term financial plan for the utility. So mm -hmm. they'll be overlaying the needs for all of the maintenance of the distribution system mm -hmm. with the new construction project for the new facilities so that we can structure our debt uh, where it remains affordable on a long-term basis for our water and sewer users. So they hope to be coming to present that in September okay. to both the utility and the finance committee. In fact, we're looking at seeing if we could maybe have a joint, joint meeting. Joint meeting would be perfect <clears throat> for that. Yeah, same thing with the water system, if yep. we needed it for the water, yes, we'll water be, plant it, as well. It both will be included perfect. in their study, yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. <clears throat> um, do we have a motion then to approve sewer system revenue bonds series 2019C? Motion by Kelbach, second by Nutting. Further discussion or questions? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That motion carries as well. Item number six is discussion and possible action approving $2,695,000 in water system revenue bonds, series 2019D. And the same goes true here. It's for the distribution system. And again, as I mentioned, the Ellers will be coming in September to go over some long, longer term financial planning. Um, Excellent. That will get us started though, with at least laying the groundwork for yes. some of the stuff that needs to happen in the future for our um, plant upgrades and uh, new plant. Um, do we have a motion then to approve Water System Revenue Bond Series 2019D? <coughs> motion by Martins. Is there a second? Second by Smith. Further discussion or questions? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That motion carries. And then just, if I can just mention sure. the, the calendar. So this will, these preliminary resolutions will go to council on August 13th. Okay. And then the sale date is September 10th. So if you read these resolutions, you're really authorizing staff to do the things that we need to do to actually make have the sale, the sale take place. Sure. So, um, you know, put make notices, work with our financial advisors to develop the official statement, mm -hmm. do the uh, publication to get the competitive bids, those kinds of things. And then we'll have Ellers in on sale day with the report? On sale then? day with okay. the report. Perfect. Yep. 
Okay, um, so that takes care of all four of those borrowing items. Um, brings us to item seven, discussion and possible action regarding paying agent services with Bond Trust Services Corp. Yep, so the city, when we make our uh, debt, principal and interest payments for our general obligation, those dates are April 1st and October 1st. And then for the utility revenue bonds, it's May 1st and November 1st. And we make those payments to two different places depending on when the debt was issued and the type of debt it is. So we either are making it to Bond Trust Services Corporation or the Depository Trust Corporation. And our financial advisors and our bond council actually look at the type of debt and then in the past um, have made a recommendation of which entity we should use. I guess our old issues are all with depository trust. Uh, our newer issues are with bond trust services. Um, there are in some situations, like if you call debt, you have to, um, do a series of publications to inform your bondholders that you are retiring your debt early. Um, those are the types of services that our, our financial advisors and bond trust services corporation will perform on our behalf. Um, there's also certain notices that have to be uh, done if you have a serial bond. And again, whenever we issue serial bonds, which I don't even really know why we do serial bonds, but if we do them, and again, it's always looking at the market and the financial advisors are making those decisions, frankly, um, then they always recommend that we use bond trust services because they are a more comprehensive service organization versus DTC. Um, when we make our payments to DTC, it's a really time-consuming process with um, making our wire payments because we have to record each QCIP number um, and make each principal and interest payment separately. Mm -hmm. And there's room for error in transposing QCIP numbers. We've also experienced um, problems with working with DTC because they, for example, think that one of our issues belongs to the Wausau School District. So they send them the notice that the debt is due and they don't send it to us. Oh, geez. And we have brought this to their attention like three years in a row and we just cannot get them to correct it. So given that we're now paying two entities, it seems like it would be a better process if we could pay one entity and Bond Trust Services Corporation seems like the candidate that we would want to use because they have an easier payment platform they provide a broader level of services and you know their customer service is uh, superior. Right now when we call the DTC, you can barely understand people that work there. It's just, I don't it, know. Maybe it's offshore? Yes, okay. I don't know. And um, so we would really like to do that. You know, as we see more turnover in employees in the city, I think just having it all in one place, you know, it's really important for us to make our debt payments on a timely basis. And we have had nothing but good service from Bond Trust Services. So we would like to do that. Um, in talking to Quarles and Brady, they would, they're working on a resolution on behalf of the city. If that is something that you'd like to do, they would present that to council on sale date. So okay. when they set up the um, payment terms for our new issues, they would all go to bond trust services and any of the issues that are currently paid to DTC would then move to bond trust services. So that would be well. effective in September then with the debt sale. Right. So then when our debt is due in October and November, we would be all set for okay. um, sending it to bond trust services. I think if this mitigates or at least reduces the margin for error, it certainly makes sense. I guess, what are your thoughts, committee? Do we have an option, uh, uh, motion to approve the move over to bond trust services? Motion by Smith. Is there a second? Second by Martins. Further discussion or questions? Seeing none, members in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None are opposed. That motion carries. Item number eight is discussion and possible action regarding implementing point and pay for online payments. 
So the city has used official payments for probably 15 years at least. Uh, this is a portal that allows our uh, residents to pay utility bills, taxes online, and they also have an IVR um, telephone payment platform. Mm -hmm. They're PCI compliant and they manage all of the credit card information. So the city doesn't get involved in who, what the credit card number is or anything. So it really protects the city from a security standpoint. So no custody of people's information? Right. Awesome. Um, so, and of course, the official payments collects and charges a convenience fee from the payer, the customer, to cover their administrative costs and to cover the credit card costs. Uh, so we incur no out-of-pocket costs for um, using official payments. Right now, official payments doesn't integrate with any of our programs. So when a person goes on our website to make a payment, they basically have to have their tax bill sitting next to them. They plug in the parcel number and the dollar amount that they want to pay, and then it accepts it. It doesn't look for that customer's account and verify the... That the, they're paying the right amount even? Yes. Oh, wow. None of that okay. is. So um, we have been kind of restless with official payments there. So then they send us one payment, um, you know, every day or whenever they've cleared all of these transactions and they send us reports of all of the payments. It's really hard to reconcile the report to the payment because they don't agree. So they settle differently than their reports oh, geez. are. Okay. And um, we knew that their credit card fees were higher than some of the other vendors. But we've been kind of waiting to make a change because we knew that uh, Marathon County was going to be implementing new real estate tax system and we knew that that system was going to have a credit card company that would integrate with it so we were waiting for that so now Marathon County has selected that software called Ascent and that software is integrated with Point and Pay another vendor um, Point and Pay actually participated in a competitive RFP process through the Wisconsin County Treasurer's Association. So the rate that um, Point and Pay offers was done in a competitive procurement process and we are able to piggyback on oh. that competitive process. So it would allow us to use the same um, online credit card company that Marathon County is using and it would integrate with our new software. So we are really recommending uh, we move to that platform. Again, just as a comparison, you can see like with a tax bill payment of $3,000, if someone pays today on our credit card system official payments, their convenience fee is about $86. Under point and pay for that same dollar amount, it will be $71. Um, for other types of payments, like a utility bill or a municipal court fine, today official payments would charge that payer $12.60, point and pay's rate will be $9. <laughs> and then e-check, which is, you know, you put in your ABA number mm -hmm. and your uh, bank number, Official payments flat rate is $3.15 and point and pay is $1.50. So it's really going to save our users money. Uh, so we would like to make this change. Okay. Um, questions for Marianne? If not, is there a motion to approve the move to point and pay? Motion by Nutting. Is there a second? Second by Kelbach. Further discussion? Seeing none. Members in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? None are opposed. That motion carries as well. Item number nine is discussion and possible action uh, regarding the June 30th, 2019 general fund financial report. So uh, we've been kind of reporting on this all along this year. The interest in the general fund has continued um, to exceed our projections. Um, one area, in, probably the only area in revenues that we are, have some concerns about is our fines and forfeitures through municipal court. Uh, right now, uh, those revenues are about uh, $52,000 down from the prior year. So if you 
forecast that through the rest of the year we would be off about $100,000. Uh, we did send a communication to the police department, municipal court, and the city attorney's office to see if we could isolate what's causing that decline in revenues. You know, we've seen a lot of changes in the last year. First of all, the police department moved to Superion, their new um, public safety software, and there was a few snafus of the citations getting from that software into municipal court, but we got that all fixed. Then we've had some pretty big turnover in the municipal court clerk, and that created a slowdown as far as um, uh, court trials mm -hmm. and um, you know just sending out reminder notices so you know we're thinking that that is the cause of it and you know it could be that citation issuance is down too because of you know the police focusing on the new software but we don't really know the cause of it today but we should have some information um, you know perhaps at the next meeting sure um, and then in the expense area everything appears to be going well except for uh, public works again because of the excessive winter. We have experienced a pretty big vacancy level in the Department of Public Works and so we're hoping that some of that will be offset by uh, employee vacancies uh, and we are continuing to monitor that but you can see that for example, in the general fund investments that, you know, it shouldn't have a substantial impact on our overall um, outcome because we've got revenues kind of off the charts as well. So. Well, and if winter happens to come early, let's keep our fingers crossed that it yeah. does not, that if we can make it through um, the tail end of the year and maybe not experience that uh, snow removal cost at that level, if we, if we end up like last year, we didn't have much until after the first of the year. So. I guess if we would need to infuse the fund uh, at some point, we, we certainly can, but uh, we'll watch for that. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Whenever you've got the equipment ready to go, it doesn't snow. So thank you for that. That's we were giddy at the end of January because we had no snow. We had to cancel Winterfest because we had no snow and it right? was cold. And then February happened. And then February hit us. Yeah, yeah. So let's but, hope that doesn't happen again. But yes, if we can get through the fourth quarter of this year, though, without a major uptick in snow we'd be we'd be okay so um, any questions for Marianne on the report if not we'd place her report on file and that's the last item on our agenda for tonight then so a motion to adjourn would be appropriate motion by Smith second by Martins members in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. opposed no one ever says nay um, we'll stand adjourned then thanks everyone Mom.